Let me see you stand Hallelujah. As we open up this call to worship, 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Raise your right hands as you make this declaration to the Lord. I am righteous. I am forgiven. I am healed. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for your saving power. Thank you, Jesus, for making us righteous. Thank you, God, for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you, oh God, for healing our bodies, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you did on the cross for us, God. That we might be saved, that we might become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, oh Lord Jesus, for everything, oh Lord Jesus. Lord God, even now, God. We thank you, Jesus. Continue to make us righteous every day. Continue to make us holy every day, Lord Jesus. In your image, oh Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, oh Lord Jesus. For, oh God, everything, Lord Jesus. Help us to live by righteousness, God. Help us to live holy lives, Lord Jesus, unto you, God. For, Lord Jesus, we are healed by your stripes, Lord. We are healed by your stripes, oh Lord Jesus. And we thank you for your set blood on Calvary, God. We thank you for your set blood on Calvary. We thank you for your set blood on Calvary, Lord Jesus. Lord God, you didn't have to do what you did, Lord God. And we are grateful to you, Lord Jesus, on today, God. We are so grateful to you on today, Lord Jesus. We are grateful to you on today, Lord Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and every day give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In hands raised, I shall always rejoice and pray without ceasing, and every day I give thanks. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, even now, God. We will choice in darkness to taste them. We will choice whether in the good times, the bad times, or the ugly times, God. We will choice in it all, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we will choice, oh Lord Jesus. We are grateful, Lord Jesus, to you, Lord Jesus. So Lord God, even now, God, whatever we are going through, God, we yet give your name the praise. We yet rejoice to you, oh God. We are rejoicing, oh God, on today, God. As we enter into this place, God, with our hands lifted up, God, with our heart of thanksgiving, Lord Jesus, we will praise your name, God. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. Lord Jesus, even now, God, we think about how you continue to have us to have a spirit of prayer, Lord. Help us to pray without ceasing, God. Help us to pray throughout the day, Lord Jesus. Help us to pray throughout into the midnight hour, Lord Jesus. To pray without ceasing, Lord God. That your spirit might fill us, oh God. That your glory, oh God, might fill this place, Lord Jesus. That your anointing will be upon our lives, oh Lord Jesus. So, Lord God, we give thanks unto you. We give thanks unto you. Deuteronomy 28 and 2. All, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Your hands raised. We command a release. We command a release of your blessings as we obey the voice of God. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we command a release, God. We command a release of your blessing. We command a release of your spirit, God. We command a release of your anointing. We command a release of salvation in this area. We command a release of deliverance in this area. We command a release of healing, God. Lord Jesus, even now, God, we decree and declare, God, that it shall be that it is done. Hallelujah, Jesus. Even now, Lord Jesus, help us to obey you, oh God. Help us to obey your voice, God. Help us to walk in your ways, Lord Jesus. Help us to be more and more like you each and every day, Jesus. Who is our prayer, Lord Jesus? 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Your right hands raised 
I shall not fear. I shall not fear. I am powerful. I have love. And I have a sound mind. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. We shall not fear any day, Lord Jesus. We shall not fear anything from the hand of the enemy. We shall not fear, oh Lord Jesus. Any doubt, oh God, be cast out in the name of Jesus. We cast out every wayward spirit that tries to hinder us, the people of God, on today, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we shall not fear, Lord Jesus. We shall not fear, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we know we are powerful because we are in you, God, who has all power, God. We are are powerful because of you. We are powerful because of you, Lord. We are powerful because of you. We have a spirit of love, oh God, because you first loved us, God. And we are grateful to you, God. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Come on and love on the Lord today. Come on and love on the Lord today. Your Alpha, your Father. Oh, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We worship your name, Jesus. We worship you in spirit and in truth on today, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for a sound mind. We thank you, oh God, for a sound mind, Lord Jesus. Lord God, you know that you are in the midst of our minds, Lord God. We are grateful to you, oh God. We thank you, oh Jesus, for our right mind, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we woke up this morning, we were yet alive. But the blood was yet running warm in our veins, God. That we woke up with the right mind, Lord Jesus. We thank you, oh Lord Jesus. With your right hands raised as we make this declaration in Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus, right now, God. We know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, us, oh God. Lord Jesus, lead God in the rest of our path, Lord Jesus. And what we should do, where we should go, what we should say, oh God. Lord Jesus, we pray even now, Lord Jesus. That your spirit, oh God, would rest upon this place, oh Lord Jesus. Lord God, we praise your name, God. Lord, we thank you in advance, Lord Jesus, for what you have done, Lord God. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for what you shall do, oh Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray even now, God, that you will strengthen our faith, God. Strengthen our relationship in you, God. Strengthen, oh Lord Jesus. Strengthen, Lord Strength in Lord God. We speak strength in the atmosphere. We speak life in the atmosphere, Lord God. Hallelujah. Life and life. Hallelujah. She's a life and death is in the power of the tongue, God. So, Lord God, we speak life on today, God. Hallelujah. There is power in our tongues, Lord. There is power in our tongues, Lord Jesus. So, Lord God, today, God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on and love on him on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and love on the Lord on today. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I all shall ask you, oh son. Lord, you are so wonderful. Lord, you are so wonderful. Lord, you are so wonderful. You are an awesome God, Lord Jesus. You reign supreme, oh God, above any other G-O-D, God. You reign supreme in our lives, Lord. You reign supreme in our spirits, Lord. You reign supreme in our minds, oh God. Lord, we are grateful to you on today, God. And Lord, she just even now, God. We thank you for this time of intercession, Lord. This time of word prayer, Lord God. This time of spiritual declaration, God. So, Lord God, even now in this service, God, we command a release of your anointing in this place. We command a release of your spirit, oh Lord God, that touches hearts, God, that changes minds, Lord. Lord Jesus, and oh God, we command a release, oh God, in this place, God, that transforms us, oh God, from being the life of a sinner to a life of a saint, oh God. Lord Jesus, we pray even now, God, as we go into the purpose of this service, Lord Jesus, that you would get the glory out of this, oh God, for this is your place, this is your temple, God, and Lord God, we put you number one here at Kingdom Life Temple, Lord Jesus. 
for this is the will of you, God, of your people on today, God. We are grateful to you, God, and we forever bless your name, Jesus. We pray the same of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' master's name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. This time you're in the hands of our lady, Sandra Canyon. Amen. Lord, this is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
the song says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Hallelujah.
Our 21-day consecration fast prayer service will be taking place this Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Doors open at 6.45 p.m. Sunday Empowerment Worship Service with Pastor Jay Samuel Canyon takes place next Sunday. Service begins at 11.30 a.m. Doors open at 11.15 a.m. The series is Increase, Enlarge, and Take Over. Our KLT 21-Day Consecration Fest is from January 14th through February 4th at 6 a.m. Our theme is Next Level, Increase, Enlarge, and Take Over. And our theme scripture comes from Job chapter 8, verse 7. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Stay connected with KLT by sending a text message to 833-338-9693 to receive KLT updates and events. Thank you for watching. Kindly follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram or TikTok or on our website at www.kingdomlifetemplenj.com. KLT, changing lives for the better through Jesus Christ. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. King of glory, fill this place. Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Yes, go down.
Just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. Glorify his name on today. Lord Jesus, we thank you, oh Jesus. On today, Lord God. Lord God, we pray even now, Lord Jesus, as we have this opening prayer. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We pray, God, that your spirit will be in this place, that your spirit will rest rule and abide, O oh God, in this place, God. Not for form of fashion, Lord Jesus, but that your power and your glory might be manifested in this place, O oh Lord Jesus. So, Lord Jesus, right now, Lord Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer and all the people of God say, Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Now we're Lesson scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 6. And we know that we are in the theme of spiritual warfare. We will be concluding today as next week we will be beginning the series Increase, Enlarge, and Take Over. How many believe that this is the year 2024? This is the year of increase, enlarge, and take over for KLT. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. And it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. What did it say? The whole armor of God. Part of the armor? Whole Just a few pieces of the armor. No, the whole, armor. whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins gird about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. As you take your seat, just say, the war is on. The war is on. The war is on. And again, this theme, the closing of this theme is on spiritual warfare. The war is on. War is a state of armed conflict between states, governments, societies and informal paramilitary groups such as mercenaries, insurgents, and militias. It is genuinely characterized by extreme violence, aggression, destruction, and mortality using regular or irregular military forces. Even as we look at the war that's going on in the Middle East, that we know that they're using all these different methods of war mm -hmm. and going to war in Ukraine, the, the wars going on in Russia. There's wars and rumors of wars going on, fulfilling prophecy of the end times in the world that we are living in. In the world today, we find there to be seven types, seven types of warfare. Biological, chemical, Civil war, cyber war, information wars, nuclear wars, and total war. Again, that's biological war, chemical war, civil war, cyber war, information war, nuclear war, and total war. Total war is warfare by any means necessary, any means possible disregarding the laws of war, placing no hip, no limits on legitimate military targets, using weapons and tactics, in, resulting in significant civilian casualties. Does that sound like something today that you are yes. seeing? Or demanding a war effort requiring significant sacrifices by the friendly civilian population. The spiritual warfare that we face is total warfare. The genesis of this warfare began in the Garden of Eden when the original sin was committed by Adam and Eve. After being tricked and beguiled by that old serpent, Satan, the devil, sin entered the world and ever since then there has been a spiritual war going on between good versus evil, holy versus unholy, righteous versus unrighteous, and the angels versus the demons. The truth of the matter is that God allowed Satan to engage in warfare only to sit and to shift out who the true children of God really are. Are you a true child of the living God? Yes. Because all God has to do is say or just think, Satan, you are defeated. Satan, you are defeated. And the devil's war path of death 
deception and destruction would swiftly come to a halt. Now, why do we need the armor of God? Why do we need the armor of God? For Satan has always been a formidable enemy. Most often when a Christian refers to his or her enemies, they are speaking about the sin in their flesh and the temptations and lusts that arise from within. These are enemies because they tempt us to act contrary to the will of God. He uses many strategies, even from trying to convince us that following our own lusts is the way to go. Lust is those desires that we experience that go against God's will. It goes against God's will. So in other words, lust is a desire for anything sinful. Lust is a desire for anything sinful. We live in a realm full of lust because they want to and desire to live in sin. As lust that is taking us to the limits. We must learn to put on the whole armor of God as children of the king and to keep it on. Put the armor on and keep it on. You don't keep putting the armor off and on, off and on, depending on what day it is. You don't just put the whole armor of God when you come here on Sunday. You don't just put on the whole armor of God when it's prayer or Bible study on a Wednesday, but every day, 24-7, 365 days out of the year, you ought to have on the whole armor of God. Yes. We must be alert. We must be alert because Satan likes to deal with ideas, thoughts, and suggestions. Ideas, thoughts, and suggestions. So some ideas, some thoughts, some suggestions are coming from the hand of the enemy because he is trying to distract you from your purpose in God. He's trying to hinder your progress progress in God, to grow, to desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must have the mind to grow. So that's why the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy us. Hallelujah. We must have our defenses up. We must have our defenses up. And as the children of God, we must launch a full-blown attack to send Satan running. Send Satan running. Don't you go running unless you are running to God. Hallelujah. But don't run away from the enemy. But um, hallelujah, we ought to be attacking the camp of the enemy, attacking the kingdom of Satan. Hallelujah. We must anticipate. An attack from our adversary. And who is our adversary? None other than Lucifer. Satan. Hallelujah. The devil. That wicked one. That is our adversary. So we must remain vigilant in our services to God. Remain vigilant in our services to God. What does the Bible say? 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 8. says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. For when there's a war going on, and there always will be, we as saints of the Most High God must learn to use our weapons. Use your weapons, saints. We may forget at times, but one thing is true. This world is a spiritual battlefield playing out in this world that is seen and unseen. Day by day, hour by hour, we face a spiritual war and an enemy who is real. Hallelujah. It is only of the Satan's tactic that he wants you to believe that he is not real. He wants you to believe that there is no 
hell, but how many know there is a heaven and yes. there is a hell? Yes. He wants nothing more than to bring defeat, for his main aim is to steal, kill, and destroy. The forces of darkness don't wait for us to be ready for their attack. They're ruthless. They are determined. They are cunning. The devil could care less if we feel prepared or prayed up for our day of war. In fact, he prefers that we were not ready and that we did not have on the whole armor of God. So that's why it's time to get armed and dangerous for the Lord. As we look at our weapons, number one is the belt of truth. Number one, the belt of truth, which is also integrity, the belt of truth or integrity. The belt of truth, a soldier in Apostle Paul's day had a leather girdle or belt that he tightened about his waist to protect his loins and carry his weapons of warfare, such as a dagger or a sword. And you can see many different Roman movies, right, where they have war, so you can kind of get that picture in your mind of the belt that they have on even as Spartacus or something like that, right? So the belt also held his tunic together so it wouldn't be snagged. So in Christian armor, it is integrity that holds everything else together. We must have integrity. We must have integrity in the house of the Lord. We must have integrity in our homes. We must have integrity in business. We must have integrity on our workplace. If you do not have integrity in the big and small things of your life, you are going to lose the battle. You're going to lose the battle. When people say that you are a woman or man of integrity, if not, then you cannot win the battle. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of a soldier was sometimes made of woven chain and used to cover the soldier's vital organs. For the Christian, the breastplate is righteousness. Righteousness. The enemy wants to attack you not only with lies, but also with impurity and also with impure thoughts. In fact, and indeed, Satan wants you to read filthy magazines, watch immoral movies, and engage in all temptations of this flesh. The bottom line is that Satan wants to get into your heart and mind. He's looking for a crack in your armor, just a small little crack in your armor and a crack in your mirror. So you can't see what's going wrong with yourself. Even as we think about a house or an apartment, if a building exterior has just a small little crack the size of a, a penny, a mouse can get in. That's how small of a crack the enemy needs to come into your house to cause and to create havoc and chaos. Hallelujah. And don't ever be fooled. Don't ever be fooled. Satan knows exactly where that crack is. Yeah. It is your heart pure before God is your heart pure before God if not then you cannot win this battle number three the shoes of peace the shoes of peace a Roman soldier would have hobnails on the sole where much like football cleats because when they were fighting, they needed solid footing from which to move. So just like if you're right here, or let's say even if you were like wrestling on um, 
let's say on the turf or the grass, right? You need to be sure that you, you are stable, that you are sure-footed, right? So that's the type of cleats or the soles that we need to have on. So when the enemy's pushing against us, right, that we shall not be moved. Let's come here for one second, Lady Canyon. I like this. Go ahead, try to push me. Oh, see? See, because my feet are sore-footed, so I cannot move. See, that's what the enemy does, right? He's trying to push us, trying to take us off our track in life. But that is what he wants to do. He wants us to not have solid footing. He does not want us to have solid footing. So unless you have a solid footing of peace, you can never make war. Sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? When Satan comes against your tranquility and peace and tries to take away your peace away, he shoots out arrows and bullets of doubts and discouragement to cause you to stumble and to fall. Doubts and discouragement come from the enemy. So in the midst of warfare, God will grace you with the peace that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, the shield of faith. Number four, the shield of faith. The Roman soldier's shield measured approximately two by four feet and was made of wood covered with leather. So just think about that, two by four feet. So if Kevin Hart was a soldier, he his whole body would pretty much be covered from head to toe. He's a small man. <laughs> so in that day, soldiers dipped arrows in oil, then lit them on fire and shot them at the enemy. Shot them at the enemy. These shields were vital to protect the soldier from getting burned. Satan is going to fire alarming and flaming arrows of doubt at you. He wants to place subtle doubts in your mind about God and his truth. He knows a spark can ignite a big fire. You will need to Feed your faith and starve your doubts. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. Are there any seeds of doubt in your mind today? If there are, then you cannot win the battle. So what seeds are you carrying into battle? Mm, hallelujah. hallelujah. There's seeds of doubt. But what seeds are you carrying into the battle? You ought to have a seed of gratefulness. You ought to have a seed of assurance that God hears your prayers. And God is hearing you. You ought to have a seed that God is commanding blessings upon your life. Fear does not go with warfare. What did we say earlier? God has not given us a spirit of fear. Number five, the helmet of salvation. Number five, the helmet of salvation. A soldier used a helmet to protect his head because if his head was wounded, he wouldn't be able to think. Again, our mind. Every believer needs to have the mind of Christ under the control of the almighty God. So when a person is saved, for the first time, he has his right mind, which is the mind of Jesus the Christ. A person without the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ has a form of insanity. They do not operate with the mind that God made them to have. So the most important thing for you to have at all times is an assurance of your salvation. Have an assurance of your salvation. Do you know that you are saved today? Do you know that you are saved today? 
If you aren't, then you cannot win this battle. Because God will give you sanity in the midst of insanity. No matter what's going on in your life, whatever seems to be topsy-turvy, whatever seems to be insane, chaos, and havoc, God will bring sanity and peace to you and to your house. Number six, sword of the spirit. Number six, sword of the spirit. When we are tempted by Satan, the most effective weapon that God has given to us as believers is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the word of God. Jesus modeled this so beautifully during his temptation in the wilderness. Because when the devil tried temptation after temptation against him, Jesus used the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Jesus spoke the word of God to Satan in Luke 4, 1 through 13. Jesus responded, it is written, you shall worship the Lord God only. Him only you shall serve. And again, brought the scripture back into context. It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So the sword of the spirit works. How many know that the word works? It works. Let the word do the work. Yes. Memorize scripture and use the word of God to defeat Satan's lies and attacks. With all of these pieces of armor in place, we must be praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So number seven is prayer. Number seven, prayer. Prayer in the spirit will give us far more than we could ever ask or think. Yes. One who is unaccustomed to praying must, from the very outset, simply discipline himself to pray. Patience and meekness then seem to come naturally. Because the Lord is near with all of the full armor of God on. It is entirely impossible for us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's why we need to put on the full armor of God. Prayer is a force. Prayer is a force. It touches e eternal powers and sets them in motion. It sets them in motion. It moves God to action. It is the inner ministry before God's face, which is the ministry that is most feared by Satan because prayer is a force. Yes. The unfolding of an intense spiritual labor that results in great visible works. It is imperative for Satan that you do not pray. Satan does not want you to pray. Prayer interferes with his power, disturbs his plans, and prayer destroys his kingdom. He fills your body, soul, and spirit with unrest. Your body is tired. Your mind is distracted all over the place. And your spirit is depressed and oppressed. This is all Satan's work to prevent you from praying. But we are to pray without ceasing. Yes. Men ought to always pray. Hallelujah. So when you kneel down in prayer, you become aware that your body does not want to be in a kneeling position. Your whole body protests with restlessness. You wiggle for a while and then you get up. Satan has gained victory through your body. Your body is to be a holy and acceptable sacrifice unto God. The body is to be kept in subjection. Under the control of the spirit of God. It must not rule, but be ruled. Your body must not rule, but be ruled. That's why our 
spirit must be in control. Number eight, praise and worship. Hallelujah. Praise and worship. Did you know that your praise and worship is very potent and powerful? It is a weapon that can unlock doors, close doors, break chains, Hallelujah. bring healing and deliverance, cause the enemy to back up and take his hands off of you, your loved ones, and your community. The Bible tells us that for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty drew God yes. to the pulling down of strongholds. So we must understand that there is a war going on. And it is not against your neighbor. It's not against the government. It's not another country. It's not against criminals and so forth. But this war is against an unseen entity, an unseen enemy called Satan, who will stop at nothing to get rid of you. Everyone can praise God, but not everyone can truly worship as when you worship. Every part of you is involved. Oh, yes. Your mind, your body, and your spirit. You get personal with God as you come from the outer court to the Holy of Holies, where you physically or spiritually prostrate yourself before God. My God. So as I conclude this message, I urge you to never be a prisoner of your past. Do not be a prisoner of your past. It does not matter what your history is because your history is not your destiny in God. Hallelujah. We serve a God of grace. We serve a God of mercy. So no matter how great your sin may have been, God's grace is bigger. God's grace is greater than your sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it must just be a lesson, not a life sentence. And definitely not a death sentence. So saints of God, learn to use your weapons. Learn to use your weapons. Your weapons of praise. Your weapons of prayer, your weapons of worship, your weapons, hallelujah, and learn to put on the full armor of God. Because whatever you need, it's all in the name of Jesus. If you want it, you can have it. If you need it, you can have it. It's already yours. Possess your possession. If you want it, you can have it. If you need it, you can have it. It's already yours. Someone say, it's already mine. It's already mine. For Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So our trust is in the God of our salvation. For he has given us his assurance that every accusing tongue will be silenced. And every judgmental charge against us shall be condemned. And God has placed his word above his holy name. Our confidence rests upon the sure promises of our all-powerful God who reminds us throughout his word that he is the almighty sovereign ruler of this universe and has given us his assurance that no weapon formed against these shall prosper. No matter what the, whether that weapon is physical or spiritual will prosper against his blood bought children. So I have been washed 
in the blood of the Lamb. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. Even when we take of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is him that made a way. So as we say this right now, Lord, you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over. You made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way. Hallelujah. Because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love and mercy you shown. But your grace was strong enough to pick us up. And you made a way. You made a way. I'm in a war. Hallelujah. The war is on. The war is on. Hallelujah. Even as these banners are in the sanctuary, what does it say? It says love, love grow, grow, pray, pray serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The war is on. We got to love one another. We must grow. We must pray in this war. We must serve God in this warfare. Hallelujah. For when the war is on, Satan is not going to fight fear. Satan is not going to fight fear. Even as we think on some games, board games or video games, you know, some people like to cheat, you know? Some people like to cheat so they, they want to win. They don't want to lose, right? So they cheat. If they can cheat on a board game, a video game, how much more will the devil desire to cheat so that he can defeat you, no matter what it is? But the devil does not want you to be victorious. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil does not want you to be victorious. The devil does not want to know what your strength is in Jesus Christ. The devil does not want you to know how you can love your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because some of us forget to love our enemies. But God said to love even our enemies, to pray for our enemies. So we must do it in accordance to the word of the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God. Yes. The war is on. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I say I want to start preparing for the communion at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will read the scripture while you're getting that ready. Our Holy Communion scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do sow the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For it is caused many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Blessed is the reading of the word of the Lord, and all of you all that are saved, sanctified, have this, have received the communion cup, because of course we're not Roman Catholics, and so we don't give to everybody. We must have a relationship with Christ, even as I just read that scripture. It is for his people, it is for the saints of God to partake in Holy Communion. Or else some people are sick among us because of that very reason. So now at this time, I ask you to stand. 
Lord Jesus, we pray even now, God, we pray that you would bless these vessels, Lord Jesus, bless, bless this wafer, bless this cup, O oh God, these sacraments unto you, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord Jesus, that this sacraments and these vessels will be blessed for your use. Bless, O oh God, as we remember you on today, God, as we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your shed blood on the cross, and God, and we thank you for your broken body on the cross, Lord Jesus. We pray right now, Lord Jesus, that this will be a blessing to us physically, spiritually, and emotionally, Lord Jesus. Lord God, even now, Lord Jesus, let someone even be healed, Lord Jesus, from receiving of the communion, God, for there is power in communion, Lord Jesus. The Lord God, we pray right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, with your wafer, take, eat ye all of it. It's in your cup. Drink ye all of it. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this gathering, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time of remembrance, Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that you would continue to rest, rule, and abide in our lives, Lord Jesus, help us to be more like you each and every day, God, and right now, God, we pray for safe traveling mercies to and fro, Lord Jesus, help us to gather here at the appointed time, Jesus is our prayer. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. All the people of God say, Amen.